Hello everyone and welcome back to another tech review. So six months ago, I had a look at a fake Huawei P20 Pro. It was called the Welcome P20 Pro. It's right here if you want to see it. I bought this off eBay for $100 Australian and that was doing the rounds for quite a while. But now since the P30 Pro has been released, a lot of clones of that have been popping up on eBay, DHgate and all that sort of stuff. This one is from Wish and I paid $130 Australian for this one. It says that it's got three cameras. It says it's got 6 gig of RAM, 128 gigs of storage, a actual teardrop screen, which we'll get to, and all this good stuff. So for $130, am I actually going to get that for my money? Let's find out and see. And this might be a PSA, depending on how this item turns out, if it's going to be really terrible or if it's actually going to be decent. I don't really know, but it's always a buyer beware situation. And if you would like to see my previous video on the Huawei P20 Pro clone and a teardown video, the card will be up here for you to have a look at, and you can go watch that and all that sort of good stuff. So two weeks ago, I ordered this on Wish. It was supposed to be delivered last week, but I'm not sure what happened, and then I got a message last night and it said it was coming today, so... No idea. But yeah, two weeks it took to arrive to me. Also, there's a hole already in the garbage bag here, which I did not make. That was already there when it came to me. Anyways, let's open this parcel up and see if $130 got me a decent phone or a hunk of garbage. Let's find out. So we have this air bubble package here, which is very rare to get. Not only is it slightly better than bubble wrap, but it looks pretty cool. And you can reuse this. If you ever need to send a package, put it in this. Because honestly, this is a good shipping method. Anyways, we'll crack this open. I'm going to open this up in a way that I can save the packaging. Because I might need to get... Oh no, all the air's just been let out of it. That's okay, never mind. Oh no, it's fine. Yeah, some sort of air bubble parcel or something. But it's good. And as with the P20 Pro clone, this is once again in a generic white box and there's nothing on it except for just some Chinese writing and it's blue, little blue sticker. This should be a shimmery sort of sky blue. That's what I chose anyway. With no info on the box. Let's see what we get inside. Had a bit of trouble getting the top off then. There we go. All right. Oh, this is going to be interesting. The device is pretty heavy, so that is a good start. Feels solid. In the box, we get probably the usual dealio, a case and all that stuff. Oh, look, we get a... a nothing. This is not for my country. I chose in Wish for an Australian plug and they sent me that. So we're already off to a good start. This has absolutely no info on it whatsoever. And I would not plug this into any outlet, even if it was filled with safety switches and everything. This is a ticking time bomb right here. So guys, if you ever get something like this, don't, please don't use it. Now, something that wasn't clear in Wish is if it has a micro USB connection or a USB-C, and the answer is micro USB, unfortunately. And we also get a cheap pair of earphones. Let's have a look at them just in case. They look cheap, of course, but the greatest thing is the button on here is ridiculously clicky and loud. So um, if you're going to be on the bus or something like that and you want to switch between songs, really good anyways and we get a case oh we get a manual too that'll be great no silicon case which is fine and in regards to the last video of the p20 pro clone the case that came with it which looks practically the same does not fit an actual p20 pro because i had my hands on one for a day and no it doesn't fit so these are some sort of custom size or something unless this case is different i'm not too sure we also get an extra screen protector which is good volume power lock key function home back all that sort of stuff there so and there you go there's the little teardrop water drop which will be interesting. We also get this here. I wish you always be happy and a positive life with a smile all the time. And these stick out. It's quite nice of them. Oh, okay. Okay. Dear customer, hello. Thank you very much for purchasing our products. I wish you a happy life. If you have any questions, you can contact us at the email address. And thwerty at 163.com and then a bunch of letters at qq.com. Thank you. Is that actually pen or is that a print? This is legitimately handwritten, which is strange. But there you go. That's it. I'm pretty sure it's handwritten anyways because it looks like it. Not sure, but that's the first time I've ever got something like that. 
and there's also a Catherine Hepburn quote here. Love is not something you can pick and choose. It simply comes to you. This is the only one thing that I understood after living almost 100 years. Catherine Hepburn. Well, I don't know what that has to do with this, but this is a nice little gesture. Thanks, guys. We also get a terrible user manual. Oh, actually, it's a very tiny one. Simple instructions. Do this sort of stuff. Use the internet. Okay. Can't wait. And that's it. Now, as I said, the wish listing says that it has three cameras, and it says that they're Leica, Leica lenses, however it's pronounced on this, but that's obviously not true. Pretty basic stuff. Nothing else in the box. Now, it's finally time to have a look at this device. Maybe just clear all this crap off my desk first. All right, here we go. I love how it's got the sticker on there, P30 Pro. Yeah, okay. Thanks, guys. Ooh. Now, I have not looked at the back of the device yet because I have a feeling that it's only going to be one camera and not three. But the front here, there's the little selfie camera up there, the little teardrop, but I have a feeling that it's not actually a teardrop display. We'll take that off in a second, but let's flip it around. And there we go. This is where cheapness starts to arise. Up here we have the three camera setup, which one camera is correct. The other two are complete duds. This here also looks like a sticker of a flash, and this also is just a print, nothing else. There's no writing on the back, nothing. It is a gradient blue sort of color, as you can sort of see there. It sort of changes color in different directions, which is okay, I guess. But yeah, three cameras, it said. That's incorrect. But wait, we've got to get to the uh, 6 gig of RAM and 128 gig storage. I can't wait for that one. There's also a plastic film on the back of the device here. Not that we're going to need it, but I'll just leave it on just in case. So anyways, here we go. This is the P30 Pro clone. We're going to take off this here. There we go. And it's actually... No, it's just a plastic one. I was going to say it's tempered glass, but no, it's just plastic. And from what I'm seeing here, it actually is a teardrop display. There's the drop there and you can see. And just a very quick note, there is the micro USB port there at the bottom with what looks like dual firing speakers, but I would say it's only just one. And then up the top, we have the headphone jack. Oh, and we also have another problem. There's no SIM tray anywhere, unless I'm blind, but I'm not seeing one. So I'm confused. Okay, just another quick test also. This felt like aluminium or metal or something. Uh, but I think, yep, it's just plastic. That's all it is. It's just a plastic frame on here. This is actually turning out to be worse than the P20 Pro clone. Oh, I see it right here. Okay. Just right there, there is a little groove for you to slip your fingernail in and pull the back off. Oh, wow. Okay. Oh, wow. Oh boy. Okay, well, um, here is the 3600 milliamp hour battery inside of this device. On the listing, it says that it's supposed to be a 3800 milliamp hour battery, which is close enough. But the specs that are on Wish, I'll just display here so you can see that. And it says that the resolution of the screen is 1960 by 1080. And we have an 8 core with 6 gigs of RAM and 128 gig ROM. Camera is only 2 megapixel plus 8 megapixel, but it does not have dual as it said, so. There you go. And this battery is also ripping off the older Samsung batteries, the ones you could actually remove. Um, it's just not quite done as well. And I, just looking at it and the weight of it, I think it's probably about a 1500 milliamp hour battery, but hey, prove me wrong. Inside here, we have the P30 Pro with the two IMEIs. And then we have the manufacturing date, which is June 2019, presumably. We also have our dual SIM and SD card up there, and we have this bit of black tape just situated here. I wonder what that's hiding. Ah, okay. That's what it was hiding. The coin-style vibration motor, I assume? I'll just put that back over it. Well, we're off to a good start already. There's no fingerprint also. It's supposed to be built into the screen, which <laughs> we will see also. But one camera, that's it. And the cheap plastic back. There's also timestamps for this as well, because I'm rambling a lot in the description and the comment section as well. It's the pinned one and it's got all the timestamps for mobile viewers and all that good stuff. All right, let's get this thing, let's put some SIM cards in it and power this thing on. Okay, with the SIM card and SD card installed, it is time to power on this phone, finally. And the back cover also just pops back onto the device like so, and that's it. 
it's good to go now. All right, let's go ahead and power on this device and see what we get. This is gonna be very interesting. I wonder if it's gonna be the same as the previous one, the Welcome. And that it is. It's from the same guys who bought you the P20 Pro clone. Welcome. Taking a while. Okay, that sounded horrific. And there we go. We have booted up finally. Wow. Well, we get a nice rose on the screen, which is cool. And you can just infinitely scroll. Okay, but the good thing is, there's a teardrop. And, I mean, we get a pretty big chin, as well as these really thick side bezels as well, but what can you do? At least it has that gimmick, so I guess it's pretty good. And the earpiece grill is just there, so it's probably only going to be a little tiny speaker just there, but we'll see if I end up tearing it down, I probably will. Let's have a look through it and see what we can find. So we get a standard menu layout with backup and reset, which probably won't work, browser, which is Google Chrome, calculator, calendar, camera, clock, contacts, downloads, email, face unlock, which will be interesting, file manager, FM radio, gallery, Gmail, Google, Google settings, maps, messaging, music, phone, Play Store, Settings, Sim Toolkit, Sound Recorder, Torch, Videos, and Voice Search. That's all we pretty much get, which is fairly stock. All right, well, let's hop straight into Settings and see what that presents us with. Well, this looks maybe Marshmallow, Android 6, we'll see. I'm going to connect it to my Wi-Fi network just quickly and see if anything comes up as well. Let's see if it does the same thing. And as I said in the last video, Christ, that was loud. We also get a lock screen magazine as well. So every time you lock the device, you get a different wallpaper. So if I do this, different one. And then again, it's a different one. Just like the real deal. So connected to my Wi-Fi network, let's go and have a bit of a browse. Now, I'm not seeing any SIM-related stuff. Oh, okay. It's not picking up my SIM card. Okay, let me go ahead and try and fix that. Okay, and powering it on, it says that we have 4G. I highly doubt that because it says that it only supports 2G and 3G in the listing, but we will see. So searching for available networks, we get only the 3G options and not 4G. So I believe this is only a 3G device. We don't have NFC or anything on this device, which is usual. In display, we have wallpaper, brightness level, sleep, daydream, font size, when devices rotate, rotate the contents of the screen, of course, and call flash, which I would assume that the LED flash would just flash. When you get a call, that's about it. Uh, Smart Wake is... Click on the name to understand the function. Done. Oh, okay, yep. So a lot of cheapo devices have this where you can just draw a gesture on the screen and it opens up something, so that's normal. Sound and notification. Yep. Interruptions. Sure, why not? Okay, basically it has a silent mode. Ah, this looks exactly like the previous one. The best odd and best loudness best surround, and lossless BT mode. I'll actually have to test out the headphone jack on this and see what it's like if it offers any enhancements or anything like that. I highly doubt it, but you never know. Uh, storage, here we go. So SD card is eight gig, which is normal, and there it is. Phone storage, 128 gig, and available is 106 gigabytes. We'll see about that one. And inside battery as well, we have, yep, yeah, looks, Battery Precent, just up the top there, Battery Precent. Fair enough. Security. There is the fingerprint unlock. Uh, let's just set a pin. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. That's not my real pin, by the way. Touchscreen fingerprint. Okay. So let's just go ahead and do this. But if I did up here... Oh, no. Okay. All right. Okay. Lock it. Let's just use uh, my pinky. Okay, it's fake. Of course, there's no underscreen fingerprint sensor. It is just a BS one. It's fairly fast, though, because it's not real. Well, there you go. Solve that one. Developer options is also enabled by default. 
uh, I am unlocking. I don't think... Why would you want to root this thing anyways? Why would you want to put a custom ROM on it? Anyways, here we go. Uh, so we have status, legal information, model number P30 Pro. The CPU is an MT6595, which I don't think that was displayed in the wish listing. I'll check. Some Chinese writing, which says 8. I'm not sure what that is. Android version is 9.0, which should be Pi, but I doubt it. Uh, then we have some stuff here. There's some information here, Q5P80L, WE3GW, B15EMMC, DDR3-12816. That might be indicating something, but we will see. So anyways, that is pretty much all the settings in there. So now it begs the question, the specs of this thing, what is it going to be running? That is the question. With the plastic build and the removable battery and stuff, it just is it going to be better than the P20 Pro clone? Who knows? Let's go ahead and install some applications to see the specs of the device. And then from there on, test the camera and just additional features and stuff. Just so then we know exactly what we're dealing with. So give me a moment and I'll install all that stuff. So just installing one of the applications, the device actually feels quite responsive and quite usable. But we'll see the specs anyways. Uh, I just want to try the face unlock feature first. Ah, there we go. Face unlock. All right. I'm going to try this and see if it works. So you don't just simply look at the device, you got to do this, unlock it, and then it comes up. I mean, you've got other settings and stuff like liveness check and all that, but in the screen unlock, there's also voice unlock. Ah, uh, summer lama dama lama. 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 Okay, so with some random stuff, let's see if this works. Summer Lama Dama Lama. Okay, it works. But let's try something else. Boo, 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 boo. Hello, how are you? The voice unlock actually works. That is amazing. Uh, Summer Lama Dama Lama. <laughs> okay, well, I'm glad that works. That was really interesting. Before we do the specs, I'm going to load up Chrome and put one of my random videos on here and just play them and see how loud the speakers are as well, just in case. Oh, is it Chrome? I don't think it's Chrome. Oh, I could play it in 1080p. Yeah, let's play it in 1080p. To find a new pen, you know, these things. Okay. This one's a big Atlantis or BIC or whatever. But this is not good enough. I want to write while it does something instead. Okay, it's lagging at 1080p playback. So that might give me an indication of what this thing is actually running. Probably one gig and a quad core, I would say. These have been doing the rounds on eBay, Wish, DHgate, AliExpress, you name it. It's okay. been around. At 480p and it's slightly struggling with it as well. So that's pretty terrible. Also, the speaker is horrible as well. All right, now let me go ahead and put the CPU applications on, and then we'll go from there. So I've loaded up a bunch of different apps onto this, so we'll see what we find. Uh, but some quick notes. The screen actually kind of is okay resolution-wise. I'm probably going to say maybe 960 by 480, something like that. And also, I just had a look at the back camera as well. The frame doesn't even match up for the back camera, as you can see there. So, uh, well done, guys. Good job on that one. All right, let's open up Antutu first, and we'll see what it says. Okay, the brand is a T75C P30 Pro Android 9 MT6595 chipset, Mali 400MP, 2340x1080 screen, 8 megapixel camera, IMEI, we don't care, RAM is 6 gig, system storage, 128 gig, all that stuff. Quad core is the CPU, so that's already a, um, a sign. Let's try the multi-touch test just here. Let's see how many... What? Whoa, 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 hang on, hang on, hang on. Five point multi touch. That's actually interesting. So the density is 320 dpi dots per inch, which uh, is pretty low for a screen this size. So we'll, we'll, we'll see. Rear camera, 8 megapixel. Front facing line is 5 megapixel. Battery level 55%. Android 9, it reckons, but I don't think so. I don't see anything there that might be able to tell us what it could be, but in some of the other apps, it might tell us something differently. NFC not supported, uh, Wi-Fi, and then a bunch of sensors that are not supported, which we only get a proximity sensor as well as a light sensor and an accelerometer. That's actually it. Wow. All right, uh, let me open the next one and we'll see what that one says. 
This one usually tells me. Here we go. P30 Pro. Yep, okay. Android version 5.1 Lollipop. Goody, 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 goody. Okay, system of chip. We have a MT6580. CPU load is at 99%. Cores, we have a quad core, not an 8 core. Mali 400 MP for the GPU, which, yep, that's normal. Total internal memory is 16 gig with 12 gig storage available. So this is actually a 16 gig device and not a 128 gig like it said. Okay, well, at least it's 16 gig. I guess that's not terribly bad, but still, it said 128 gig and you get 16. The next is the RAM. Let's see. It says we have two gigs of RAM with one gig free. Okay, so two gig of RAM. That's not too bad. So two gigs of RAM and 16 gig storage. That's actually not half bad. It's a no-name device. I mean, we have Welcome, but two gig and 16 gig is actually not terribly bad, but we'll see. There's the screen resolution there is 720 by 1424. So it's a 720p screen, nothing to see in battery, thermal, 57 degrees Celsius for the CPU temperature. And there's the sensors just there. The cameras, uh, it says the back one is a six megapixel and the front one is a 2.3 megapixel. And in mobile, it says GSM only. It doesn't say 4G or anything. Um, I'll ring it anyways and see if it actually comes up with something, but I'd say it's only a 3G device. Okay, and just one more app just for the shits and giggles. Okay, there we go. So we have a P30 Pro, as we all know, MediaTek MT6580, two gigs of RAM, which I, that's better than I expected. CPU, uh, yep, quad core. Yep, the storage is 16 gig, which as I said, is not too bad. Not great, not terrible. And there we have the 720p display. So I'm absolutely sure I know the specs now. Let's try cameras. 6.2 megapixel as the image resolution and the video resolution is two megapixel. Wow. I bet it'll record at 640 by 480. Also cameras installed too, which that's what we expected anyways. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna test the call quality of this. I'm also gonna plug my headphones in and try that as well as testing the cameras. So I'll stop filming for a bit, test all those features, and I'll come back to you guys and we'll finish this video because it's gone on for far too long and I've rambled too much. So the earpiece doesn't seem to be anything special. It's very muffled and yeah, it just doesn't sound that great. So next up, I'll try my headphones and see if there's any audio enhancements like it says in settings. I've enabled all the enhancements, so I'm gonna plug some headphones in and see what it does. And I have found another issue. So all of this stuff does work. The sound enhancements sort of make it sound a little better. Just some virtual surround sound and a bit of a bass enhancement, that's about it. When you plug headphones into it though, it sort of doesn't go all the way into the headphone jack because the case is too thick or the headphone jack is just too far into the case, I guess. Very, very difficult to see. See how it doesn't pop down all the way? It says that the headphones are detected and that's correct, but right now it will only be one channel if you do that, it's two channels. That's a problem. And now, finally, it's time to jump onto the camera test. However, it's late at night and it wouldn't be any good. So I'm gonna wait till the morning, good old sunrise, and take some photos if I'm awake, and show you that, conclude this video, and let you guys know if this device is worth the money or if it's not worth the money. So give me a few hours to test things out and I'll be back. Okay, and testing the recording quality for this P30 Pro clone, and we're just going to go into some color. And there is a lot of wind too. And we'll zoom into our stupid frogs here, and see if it... Nope. No autofocus while filming. Ah, oh, there you go. Okay, so it is still night time. I've played around with the cameras and just fiddled around with the settings and stuff and it's very, very laggy. But obviously you've seen the pictures and the video that I've just showed beforehand, so let me just place a caption here to sum it all up for you. It's either crap, great, good, horrible, or 
all of the above, who knows. Now I'm in sim status at the moment where it usually will tell you if it's 4G LTE or something like that, but no, in fact, this is 3G and that displays it right there. HSPDA or HSPA corresponds to 3G. So we've solved that one. Also, one other thing is that the serial number is the best serial number I've ever seen. They usually put this on a lot of cheapo devices. They never ever put a unique serial number. It's always the same thing. So now this part you might want to pause for, here are the specs. So this is the advertised specs, and this is the specs that I got on the device. And I'd actually display the P30 Pro specs, but you could just go to GSM Arena and have a look at them, but they're far superior than this, obviously. So overall for $130 Australian, which is about 100 US or so, it's not a terrible device. You do get two gig of RAM, quad core, 16 gig storage, the cameras, the battery life, the build, it's just, there are plenty of other options on the market for around 100 US that are much better than this. And from a known brand as well, like Xiaomi or whoever. Those phones are much better. You know the specs that you're getting and you're not just buying some random thing off Wish and just hoping that it comes with whatever advertised specs that it has. And for this saying that it has six gig of RAM and 128 gig ROM, and that is incorrect. If you've bought this, you can actually let whoever you've bought this off know that the specs are not what they're advertised as and that you would like some sort of compensation, a partial refund perhaps, um, because this is false advertising. Unfortunately, they're going to get away with this for as long as clones keep being made. This is more just for people who have bought this device, they see it, they work out that it's only got 2 gig of RAM and 16 gig ROM, but they've paid for something that's far more superior. It's just something that you should raise up with Wish, eBay, etc, etc. Unless the specs are listed in the description and that you know, then that is all fine. But if they're like mine and advertised incorrectly, then you might want to do something. Otherwise, as I said, not a bad device. Not great. Not terrible. It's usable. You can get something that has a lot better value for around the same price. You just get the teardrop notch and that's really it. Well... That is it for the P30 Pro clone from Wish Review thing. That's went far too long. I hope you enjoyed this sequel to the P20 Pro clone video that I done six months ago, which has been linked up here all along if you want to click that and watch that first. But it's just more of a buy beware situation. If you've bought something that says it's got 6 gig of RAM and 128 gig ROM and that's what you expect, well, that's what you would expect. But if you get something that's got 2 gig and 16 gig, well, it's another story. I might tear this down in the next video, so stay tuned and we might see what's inside of it. I just really want to see how big the speaker is and just the layout of the motherboard and stuff like that to see how cheap it is. That's pretty much all I have to say about this device. So thank you very much for watching this review. If you haven't watched through it all and just went through the timestamps, that's absolutely fine. As long as you get to a point where you know what this device is running and my opinion on it and all that good stuff. With that being said, thank you very much for watching, guys. I do appreciate it, and I'll see you all in the next video, which is either going to be tech sneakers or something like that. It'll be one of the above. All right, be good, people. Take care, and I'll see you next time. If you like this content, feel free to leave a like or a dislike if you didn't. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you all in the next video.